Comic Book Savant, episode 306. I know this. This I know. All that I have, all that is me, resides inside my poetry. And every time I write a rhyme, it might be the line that sets mine free. And also, I know that... Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Comic Book Savant Podcast. I'm your host, James Harris. This week's episode, we're going to go into the fall TV uh, show slate, far as comic book related shows, and some of the ones that I followed and or I'm looking most forward to going into this new season. Um, we have a excellent selection of comic book shows, cartoons, and things on the airways right now. I'm just going to talk about uh, the handful that um, that have pretty much caught my eye or have kept my attention over the time uh, the time frame. But before we get into that, as always, I'd like to get a shout out to my friends. Uh, this week, I'm going to spotlight one of my mentors that helped me uh, when I started podcasting, uh, which is a really good friend of mine. And we've been friends for as long as I've been doing the show now. And that's Derek Coward over at uh, Comic Book Noise. Um, he does a plethora of podcasts on his own. He also has a huge network of, of podcasts ranging from his own show. Um, they have DC noise, geek brunch, uh, Marvel noise, mighty Thorcast, um, tons and tons of shows. Um, a lot of my friends that started around or around the same time as I have, have shows on his network as well as him. So definitely if you have a moment, Go by comicbooknoise.com. You won't just find Derek's show, which he does um, comic book noise uh, itself. And then he has, um, you know, a lot of subgenres of breakout shows that he does, as well as the other ones that he puts out um, through his comic book noise family. But you'll have all the links there on the homepage when you go to a site. So um, if you have a moment, check it out. And he also has... Um, links to to other podcasters such as myself and other people that um, he's made friends with over his time of podcasting. So you can find dozens of podcasts over when you go to his main page. So definitely check it out when you have a moment. If you uh, try out his show or one of his shows on his network, please drop him a line and let him know that you have, you heard about him here uh, to let him know that I'm, you know, definitely as always sending love out uh, to him. So if you have a moment, if you like it, always take a moment to reach out to the creator just to drop him a line and let him know you appreciate um what they're doing because we work real hard behind the scenes to try to bring you the best content out there. So, you know, if you like it, you know, reach out to them just to drop them a line and say, Hey, I enjoy what you're doing. It's just that simple. Um, also as usual, last but not least, I have to give a shout out to the sponsor, which is in stock trades.com. I love these guys. Uh, we've been in partnership together for many years now, one of the best places are always my first go-to place. If I'm looking for any type of collected edition, um, again, you're going to get some of the best prices on the, on the net when you're looking at, uh, trades, Marvel masterworks, um, omnibus, um, any type of collected edition you want, check out in stock You're going to have discounts up to 35, uh, 45 and sometimes 50, uh, percent off books. If you, um, have an order of $50 or more, you can get free shipping. If you're a U.S. customer that again, that only applies if you're a U.S. customer, if you happen to listen to this show and you go over to the site, you still get the great savings. But if you live outside of the U.S., you will have to pay for shipping. You won't get that extra bonus of the free shipping, but no worries. They have some of the lowest international shipping rates you're going to find around. Um, so definitely if you have a moment, check out in stock trades.com. Um, now to the meat of the episode. Um, again, it's been so many comic book related shows and even more are, are premiering this season. I'm not going to, I probably will cover some of them in a, um, in a future episode. I just wanted to follow through with the shows that I've, I mainly watch and that I review on the show and it's enough of those. And like I said, it's even more, um, I think, um, Fox or I can't remember what network is going to be on. They're doing a Legion 
uh, X Men Legion show um, that's going to be coming out. But again, I will um, do some research on that and cover that in a future episode. This again mainly is going to cover the staples of the shows that I normally cover during the season, and I do my um, my ref- my fall review at the end of the seasons to recap most of the shows. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the Flash, Arrow, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, which is all all, this, all on CW now, and then of course like Walking Dead, Agents of Shield, Star Wars, Rebels. Those are the shows I'm mainly going to cover. Um, these are the shows that you know have I, you know caught my interest. We you know we added Supergirl and Legends of Tomorrow because they were shows that premiered last fall that have stayed around and been renewed for. Um, another season, but let me just jump into it. First and foremost, uh, first show that I have on my list is the flash season uh, three premieres Tuesday, October 4th at 8 PM on the CW. Um, as always, we have the main cast as we have Grant Gustus, um, Gustin as Barry Allen. We have Candace Patton as Iris West. We have Danielle, uh, Panabaker as, uh, Caitlin snow. We have, uh, Carlos, uh, Valdez as Cisco Ramon, and we have Jesse L. Martin as Detective Joe West. Um, this show left me in a weird spot, and I talked about it in my fall uh, review for, um, I guess, 2016, because this is really the 2016-2017 season. Um, the season finale left me in a weird space with the Flash television show, Um, They're really setting things up in this, um, in the finale going into this season. And they've already talked about it. They've already, um, we've already seen teaser trailers. They're going into flashpoint. My thing about this is with the show, you've already done flashpoint two other times, at least where Barry has gone back in the past and changed some events. And when he came back, the world wasn't exactly the same. We adjusted to it, but we've already went to that trick twice. And now we're going to do it a third time. And I, I just feel like as a character, Barry would have learned even within his loss that going back in time, trying to change events would only make things worse. We've seen it happen already, you know, but this time they're dubbing it as flashpoint. And then other times I guess he was just playing around. I don't know. I, um, I'll have to say, um, my love for the show has slightly lessened because they're, to me, they're doing a little too much time travel. I would like one stable reality that the world is in. And like, even if he travels to like, he, he traveled last year, they did a crossover with Supergirl and he crossed over to her world because back then it was on CBS. Um, I, I dug that. But when he came home, he was in that same reality that I don't mind and going to earth two and coming back. Those episodes are really thought were, were cool and were were some of the stronger episodes of the season. Um, but I just keep, you know, hating the, the variations of resetting the world. Um, I just, like I said, I feel like they've really gone to that one too many times. And I, and I hope after whatever happens with, um, with flashpoint, that um, coming out of it, we kind of step away from the time travel, leave the time travel to Legends of Tomorrow, because that's the whole basis of the show, that they're traveling through time, going to different periods, time frames, and, and, and history and things of that nature. Leave it for that, because I feel like you've, you've already kind of um, wore that trick out already. So that's my hopes. But um, for me, if you guys have been a long time listening to the show, you know, I have a scale that I try to do a more realistic based scale, um, far as my ratings. So going in my anticipation level or my recommendation coming off of last season into this season, um, you know, I have my rating scale of must watch required viewing, good watch on demand or skip it. So you guys kind of have a rough idea how I feel, or if you haven't watched the show going in, you can kind of, uh, gauge a temperature on if it's something that you might want to try if you haven't already. For me, Flash, coming off of last season, anticipation of this season, it's a good watch. It dropped down considerably for me from season one to two, uh, going into two to three. It's a good watch for me. I definitely still watch it because I found myself connected to the whole CW verse of these shows. So, and they're all so interconnected 
but it has dropped down from a must watch to a good watch for me. So I'll definitely still be watching this show. Um, but I'm, I'm not like, if I'm don't see it immediately, it's not a big thing. I will watch it. Um, nonetheless, um, next show on the list is arrow. Uh, we're going into season five, which will premiere the following night on Wednesday, October 5th at 8 PM on the CW network. Um, also we had the same cat. Well, the main base cast is the same, uh, for Stephen Amell as Oliver Queen, uh, David Ramsey as John Diggle, Will uh, Holland as uh, Thea Queen, uh, Susanna. Wait, I forgot to update that. Um, we have, um, Paul Blackthorne as Quentin Lance. And then we have Emily Bet- Rick- uh, Rickards as Felicity Smoke. Uh, a lot of def- uh, definite status quo changes happen at the end of season four for Arrow. Um, Arrow was my one of my favorite, or at one point it was my favorite CW show. Um, it has fallen tremendously for me. It got a little bit too soap opera, opera like for me, especially last season. I you know I was really trying to stick in there. And like again, I'll, I'll probably the only reason why I kept I made it to the end of the season is just how Arrow <clears throat> is the is the center, it's the Iron Man of the CW verse. It all started with Arrow. So how it branches out and interconnects to the other shows. Um, I wa- That was the only reason why I kept watching Arrow uh, through the completion of the season. But it got kind of rough. They had some you know bright spots throughout the seasons and, and, and episodes. But the overall story arc um, had the same beats as the previous seasons to me. Um, I think the last good, really, really good season maybe was season three. Um, no, probably season two. I liked parts of season three. Um, last year was just a, a kind of mixed bag. They had some, like I said, had some highlights here and there, but I just felt like, um, it got a little bit too much like a soap opera for my taste. Um, and less, uh, less action. They, they said they listened to the fans, you know, they're doing a whole bunch of changing The the team has kind of broken off and gone their separate ways, but they're, you know, you'll be following them in their new endeavors, which again, they're probably pulled back together. Um, so it'll be interesting to, to see that. Um, for me, this one is on demand. It's, it's again, I, I'm kind of forced to watch it because the shows are interconnected and they have nice tie-ins to one another. I, you know, I hope the show can turn it around because I feel like it really nose dived hard. Um, again, they have proclaimed that they've listened to the fans. They're shaking things up. They're going to be less, um, relationship heavy and, um, and get back to the gritty action side of things. I hope so. I'll be watching. Um, and that's my hopes that they can turn it around. They're kind of losing me right now for me right now. It's just on, on demand. Um, it's, it's not, like I said, it's not on the top of my, my list of shows to watch, but it's, it's in my, um, you know, in my queue. Nonetheless, it's on the DVR for me to watch. Um, the next show we have is Supergirl, um, season premiere is going to be Monday, um, Monday, October 10th, uh, 8 PM on the CW. And the cast is as follows. We have um, Melissa uh, Benoit says Carol, back as Carol Danvers. Mashad Brooks is James Olsen. David Harewood is Hank Henshaw. Calissa Flockhart is Kat Grant. And I uh, hope I pronounced this correct. Uh, Cy- Shyler Lee as Alex, uh, Alex Danvers. This show caught me off guard. I, I mean, I had to apologize to a lot of fans because when I when I talked about this last year during the fall preview, I'm like, I doubt it because it's on CBS that it'll make it past like three episodes. Then I totally fell in love with the show. The show's charming. Um, it had a nice little charm to it. CBS, you know, got it through a first season. Um, then the off season came, it was, this show was in limbo for the longest time before C C W they, they made the deal with, um, CW to go ahead and bring the show back to CW because CW originally passed on the show. Um, but now it's coming back home so it can officially tie into the CW universe with all the, not all the legal complications of doing a crossover between 
shows on different networks is home. They're all going to be filmed in a similar place. I hope the charm of the show um, remains because they, they made a lot of um, in the dialogue in the show. If you hadn't have not watched Supergirl, go back and watch, watch the first season. They made a lot of comments and digs in the um in the dialogue about CW shows and the demographic of the CW um, that were really funny, um, that were breaking the fourth wall, but not, they weren't like looking at the camera winking, but it was just in a natural dialogue and it was just really witty and something kind of different. And that'll just would make you chuckle. Um, but it's a really good show. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, they've done a Supergirl show. Well, I've always, Love the Supergirl character from um, Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. Um, and I think this is a great um, embodiment of it. Melissa Benoit is just so charming in the role. I really love, love her chemistry with Mashad Brooks as well as James Olsen. And I love one of the most um, biggest surprises for me from the show was um, David Harewood as Hank. Uh, Henshaw slash Martian Manhunter. He is like such the heart of that show. Um, right alongside him is Calissa Flockhart as Cat Grant. You know, I hadn't seen her on TV in, in years and, and, um, you know, since Ally McBeal days. And um, I was a fan of that show and I hadn't seen her in years. And she just so owns this role in the, the chemistry between this cast. I think I is, is, is tight, just as tight as what you see on, the other shows with Arrow and Flash, which is awesome because they did it in one season and they, they're just really clicking and have great chemistry together. So for me, that's a required viewing. Um, it's a really charming show. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, and then they're adding, they have Superman coming in for a few episodes this season and just building off the momentum from, uh, from last year's, um, last year's uh, season. I look forward to see where they're going now with it being, on CW and, and on this universe, how it all um, lines up. Um, and I hope the production value, because I, it was a very expensive show since you're doing a Supergirl show on network television. I know one of the reasons why it stayed in limbo so long, it took about 3 million per episode to produce with all the special effects, hopefully because they're not in it. Cause they were filming it in LA, moving it to Vancouver where all the rest of the CW shows um, are set up in film. Hope, hopefully in moving the show, we don't lose the quality because special effects weren't, you know, in certain spots they were better than others. But again, it's, it's, it's a show that is having 20 some episodes produced during a television season with special effects. You having to have special effects throughout the show because it is a Supergirl show. She flies, she's going to use her powers, um, super strength and all that. So I'm hoping in the switch over to CW that the production quality as far as the special effects stay on par, because I kind of, you need that to kind of be, um, credible. So, um, and they don't have a superhero on the CW that is so power heavy, you know, the flash. Yes, but it's a totally different, set and his is the speed hers is a magnitude of power so i'm interested to see the first few episodes and see how that transition plays out on screen so for supergirl again it's required viewing for me uh next show up is legends of tomorrow season two will premiere thursday october 13th 8 p.m on the cw network um we have as far as the returning cast that we know of so far, and we know we have new people coming in as well. We still have Victor Garber as Dr. Martin uh, Stein, uh, Katie Lot, um, Lot, Lots, 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 I can't remember how she pronounces it, as Sarah Lance. We have Arthur Darville back as Rick Hunter. Um, we have friends, a uh, dream as, uh, as Jackson. We have um, Brandon Routh back as Ray Palmer, Dominique Purcell um, as Heat Wave. Um, I don't know how little or how much he'll be on this season because I know him. Um, I can't remember the other actor that does uh, Captain Cold. I know they're they're doing this this uh, this season. They're doing a reunion on Prison Break, so I don't know. Will he only be on part of this season or not? But where they left it, he was still a part of the team at the ending 
of last season. So, but I don't know. We don't know how characters will be used and be woven in and out. This is an anthology series. Um, so we could be in some and not in all the episodes. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see on that. Um, but I'm, this show won me over. Like I thought this was like a joke. It wasn't really going to be a good show. Um, it started off a little slow. The first, maybe two or three episodes after you got past those, it really start clicking for me. And, um, it's required viewing. I, I start falling in love with the, um, with the characters and they were side characters on shows. You know, they were in, in a lot of arrows in the flashes, especially the first half of their seasons concentrated a lot on setting up a lot of these characters for legends of tomorrow, which I felt like they handled it with various levels of success. But then with a character like uh, Sarah in the white canary, you know, I felt like she was not being utilized well in the beginning of this, this um, season of legends of tomorrow. But by the end, I totally fell back in love with her character, um, seeing the relationship between, uh, Firestorm and, and with Jackson and Dr. Stein, uh, was great. Um, you know, it's a really, really good show that it might not be for everyone, but if you give it a chance and you have fun with it, I think you can really get into it. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. And they're bringing the JSA in this season. Um, we saw the end of last season, our man approaching them to send them on another big adventure. Um, so definitely looking forward to see what fun they can conjure up uh, this this year on Legends of Tomorrow. Next, we have The Walking Dead. Season 7 premieres Sunday, October 23rd, 9 p.m. Uh, on the AMC Network. I'm not going to go over the cast. You should know it by now. It's been out seven seasons. Um, it's a must-watch for me. They're, they've finally pretty much they've gotten, gotten caught up to... Um, a renaissance period for the the comics. We we got introduced in the very last episode to Negan. A lot of was was the prelude to Negan. Now Negan has arrived. Um, you know we are, were they ended on a huge cliffhanger, which was a, a a large bout of controversy for a lot of people. Um, for most of the early the summer after the show went off the air where he's doing his infamous meanie, meanie, miney, mo. He's going to smash somebody with the bat um, situation. We we don't know who it's going to be because it, it, it ends right on that cliffhanger. I wish we could kind of see the results of it, but that has been beaten to death at this point. Um, it was right. It's right out of the pages from issue 100. We're in the comics. Spoiler, if you don't already know, Glenn in the comic book is the one that, Negan kills. Um, I, I, let's say, let me say this. I'll be surprised if they kill Glenn. Um, he's so popular. They teased the Glenn death, um, earlier in the season of season six. It didn't go over well. People were livid and they got, you know, um, the walking dead producers got this like, just it was a lot of outrage. Just the fan base was was totally, you know, uh, was outraged by it, and they let them they let them hear it, you know. So I don't know that they would still go down that route, um, because they have altered, and you know, we know this. They've altered certain things from how they happened with the comics. So they they see they they tread the path of being. Loyal to the comic, we're doing slight variations of events and or how people died and or letting this person live longer or doing a different uh, variation of a character altogether as far as their their um, personality is concerned. So it's one of those things where going into season six, I was waning from The Walking Dead. Last season reinvigorated my interest into the show. It's one of the strongest seasons ever. So this is a must watch for me and they got the perfect actor uh, to play Negan for me. So um, I'm on board to see where this season's going to go. And I hope it lives up to the quality of season six because they really did a good job for that very first episode. It sucked me into the very last episode of the season. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Next on my list is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This premieres 
I'm recording this Tuesday morning. So it actually we're, we're, um, premieres tonight. Um, so season four premieres tonight, Tuesday, September 20th at 10 PM on ABC. I don't know about that time slot. Um, I don't like the time slot for that. Um, I wish it was on at nine or, you know, I prefer eight, but nine or 10, I'm not sure about, but ABC from my experience and shows that I, I really enjoyed, um, they they do this thing where they start moving it around to different nights, playing around with the different time slots, like trying to force it out. And I think this is a really stable and solid show. So I think they should give it a better time slot and let it just roll. But, you know, what can you do? It's kind of the situation we're caught in with some of these shows, but, um, I don't think ABC, you know, they've, they've already came off of canceling, um, agent Carter, which I was distraught about that because I didn't watch season two, right. When it was airing, but I had it all DVR and I watched it after the season and it was, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it as much as if not more than the, um, the first season of the show. And they really left a lot of things open and they just, they just canceled it. So they left a lot of plot threads just like dangling. And, and I know Peggy, um, not Peggy, um, Haley Atwell was down to do more. She even threw it out at comic conventions. Like she would look maybe if they would see it on Netflix or something like that. Uh, no one had been willing to pick it up at this point. Um, she has a new show premiering on ABC this coming season. Um, that doesn't look promising though. I really love her as an actress. So I'm feeling a certain kind of way about that. Um, it might not last long. So maybe we might get, maybe they might go back and revisit agent Carter at some point, but time will tell enough about that. This is about agents of shield. Um, it was a very, um, last season, season three, the first half of the season was one of the best on TV came back from the break that they took the mid year in the year break going into the, to 2016, when it came back, it was uneven. It wasn't as focused and it, it, it tapered off for me quite a bit. It had lost a lot of momentum that it gathered from the first half of the season in this, in the second. Um, but it ended on the strong, the season finale, they did like a two, two episodes, two hour movie. Um, they did that in the end of season three and it helped a lot. Um, it really brought, you know, really, tied everything up together that were dangling threads and, and resolved a lot of uh, plot threads that had been going on since the very first season. And it kind of came full circle. It ended well. They did a little teaser at the end, um, skipping like six months forward. Definitely the status quo has changed considerably and they kind of leave you hanging for this. So I'm super hyped and watching it tonight to see what's going on, what has changed. You know, we can get some, more background into the changes that um, that happened in that snippet that we've seen six months later from the events of the season finale. So for me, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has become a must watch. Last but not least, one of my favorite shows on television right now, Star, uh, Star Wars Rebels. If you're a Star Wars fan, this is required viewing. I cannot say this enough. You must watch this show if you're a Star Wars fan. Some, you know, some adults are turned off by the fact that it's a cartoon, but it is, it is, it's part of canon now, just like the Star Wars, the Clone Wars was, um, same, the same great people. Um, you have, um, Dave Filoni that did a masterful job running, um, Star Wars, the Clone Wars. You have him, Greg Weissman. If you don't know who Greg Weissman is, you have, um, Gargoyles, the cartoon, you have him to thank for that. Young Justice, the cartoon. He's done numerous, very successful cartoons for Disney over the years. Um, and Simon Kinberg is a part of the, the, the team on that because he's a part of the story group as well. Uh, so you have that trinity of of producers and creators um, behind this show, and it's and things are tying in. It's like we've learned you know, this summer that a character from star Wars, the clone wars is Forrest Whitaker's character in rogue one. So you definitely can be missing out on some very useful information. If you're a star Wars fan to the lore and the story of the things that happen between the gap, if you're not familiar with um, 
Rebels. Rebels takes place after the Clone Wars show during during that time period um, where the um, the Empire is coming into prominence between you know Episode three and Episode four. That like what is eighteen or nineteen year gap or whatever it happens in in that 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 space of time and it shows of course by the name um the the beginning of the rebel alliance as we get to see it in episode four you're seeing that process through this show um it has a stellar cast to it you have you know Fiddy, freddie prince jr as uh kanan kanan has become a very hugely popular character books they have the um even though it's canceled now and I'm kind of upset about it, uh, Kanan, the last Pad- Padawan, which was like a prequel talking about his days, um, as a Jedi before, um, order 66 came down. Um, we have Vanessa Marshall as a Herrera, a Sadula. You have steam bloom as Zeb, uh, Aurelius. We have uh, Taylor gray as Ezra Bridger, uh, entire, uh, I hope I pronounced this correctly. Taya uh, Sakar as a uh, Sabim Ren. And these characters, like it's a small cast, but they've really fleshed them out in these past two seasons. Um, we had Darth Vader included in last season. They've in the preview trailers, they've, they've brought in from the novels, general Thrawn that was considered legends. They've um, taken him out of the legends universe and in, you know, incorporating him into canon now. So he's going to be the major villain going into this, um, into this season. Um, is it ended on, we've had Darth Maul brought over from, um, Star Wars Clone Wars as well. Um, he was towards the end of last season. Uh, Ezra is being kind of seduced by Darth Maul right in the middle of his, uh, his, uh, training with Kanan, a real big, probably one of the most drastic tonal changes in the show happened last season that I've seen in some time. It really got dark. A lot of major things happen. A lot of characters have been changed profoundly from the events of the end of last season. So for me, this is a must watch. It premieres this weekend, uh, uh, Saturday, September 24th, 8 30 PM on Disney XD. Definitely check it out. If you haven't seen the show yet, I don't know. You can probably find them on iTunes or Amazon video. I don't know if season one, I don't know if season two, because I think season two just dropped on Blu-ray and DVD like a few weeks ago. But um, I don't know if season one of Rebels would be on Netflix or not. I'll check into that and I will let you guys know um, next episode um, if you can um, if you can find it. I'll do a rundown if you're someone that hasn't watched the show. I'll go back and do. I didn't think of doing that before that, before I recorded this, just in case that you hadn't seen any of these shows and maybe I might have sparked your interest. Um, but I will do that in the future if I do an episode like this to make sure I do it in advance. But I will give an update and check into it and let you guys know if you can find them on something like Netflix. So if, at least if you have that, if you want to binge one of these shows, uh, you'll be able to do that. But I'm, I'm likely to say yes, because I know Netflix has that deal with Disney. So you should be able to find like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You should be able to find Rebels because that would fall under the, the ABC umbrella. I know Walking Dead is on um um, on Netflix. I don't know if season six is on there yet. Um, and I'm not sure about the CW shows, but again, I will find out and let you guys know. Um, but that's really all I have for you guys for this week is, is I'm really hype about it. I think most of the shows are in a, a really good place. Um, I'm loving shows that I never thought I would when they first were promoted last season. But again, sometimes you can't judge a book by its cover. Literally, you have to just give it a try and you might be pleasantly surprised by what you get on the other side of it. So that, that I, I definitely can attest to from personal experience. So again, I'm really hype about these shows It's enough to going to keep me busy because you know, it's a lot of episodes between these shows to watch, but periodically during the season, I'll be doing updates. Like, like I've always have, I'll do a movie, um, excuse me, a TV talk um, episode and we'll run down, you know, a, a 
four, five, six episodes to let you know how these shows are progressing. But I, that's why I chose not to pick up any more shows. I think this is enough to, you know, and, and we are losing, we lost Agent Carter. So that was another show that I covered that I don't have, you know, that's kind of been taken off the board. Uh, so, um, yeah, I might, I don't know about Legion or not. I don't know much about the character. I have, you know, so I'm, the interest hasn't pulled me in enough to be like, for definite, sure, I'm going to try it. But I'm always open to trying new shows, especially if they're comic shows, so I, I can review them and bring, you know, bring you my opinions of them. This, you know, if you, just in case you haven't tried it, I can try it for you. So if it tastes bad, I can tell you, oh, this sucks. <laughs> so you can avoid it at all costs. So I'll look into that. If it's any shows that I left off that you, that are new shows, newer shows um, that you want me to check out, you know, all you can always hit me up. You can go to the website, comicbooksavant.com, or you can hit me up on Twitter at comicbooksavant. All the social media should be at comicbooksavant, Snapchat, Instagram, uh, Twitter, or just go to the website. Or if all else fails, you can email me, comicbooksavant at gmail.com as well. Um, that's all I have for you guys this week. I'll see you again next week for another episode of Comic Book Savant. Take care. And into lyrical wholeness, and I know this, and I know this, this I know, this I know.